Okay, so. So last week I talked a little bit about colour mixing. So this is a refresher for most of you, but for some of you, I won't have gone through this. Um, so really what, what I was saying very briefly was, I sort of based my teaching on this book, which I found, I found quite a useful book when I first started teaching. Um, so in this, this, they suggest to use this colour wheel, um, and they call it a colour bias wheel, because it's basically a couple of each of the primary colours. So normally you have like red, yellow and blue as your primaries. And when I went to infant school or junior school, they were the colours they said that you can mix all the colours from. But this one is saying that you basically need at least two of each of these. And that will give you like a, a you know, you've got kind of two reds and one's going to be slightly biased towards one of the secondary colours. So that's the idea. Called colour bias wheel because the primaries are biased towards the secondaries. Um, so I thought I'd use this, this idea. Um, I find that these colours, and I tend to add some white and some brown into the, into the mix. But with those, I can mix an awful lot of the colours that I need. So I, I thought I'd do a little bit of still life and use, try, try it using mostly these colours. So I've got them set out here. So this is my palette from yesterday. So as you can see, I've got primaries, but I've got a few other colours that I use just for convenience as well. But today I'll just try and use these, these primary ones. Um, so if you want to mix black, the idea to mix black is really a little bit of all the colours. Um, so we'll try that, but I find that you can only really get it so dark. So I'm just going to try mixing with a knife here. So this tabletop or cabinet top it is a kind of greyish blackish colour. So basically I use some of the, I find the Elysium Crimson which is a nice dark kind of red, a little bit of ultramarine blue and then that will get me a really very dark purple sort of colour, something a bit like that. And then to stop that being too purple, you'd add a little bit of yellow. So if I just take a tiny bit of this, this is a lemon yellow, but it could be even the yellow. I would never think of putting yellow to make a dark colour. To make a, no. Any dark colour. It doesn't work fantastically well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, the idea is to sort of neutralise that purple, because obviously like what I've done yeah. is blue and red. That make purple, and then the idea to to sort of make it less less of a purple is you use the colours opposite on the colour wheel, so adding some sort of yellow. So that's that's basically what I've done. So I've come up with that, um, and I put a little bit of that on painting. So that can go in this shadow area down here, and it really to me it, it reads almost like a black, but it's it's really kind of like a really dark purple. So that, that's the sort of drawback, is that's as dark as I can get with, um, with, with just colours. Um, you might actually find a darker blue than that, something like a Prussian blue, you might be able to get it a little bit darker. Um, so that's why I tend to use a brown as well. So <clears throat> if I keep the same mix and just add a bit of brown in, and brown is like, a, it's got yellow in it, brown is, so, and so that, that to me makes it a little bit darker still. It's actually hard to see see the difference there, but you, you'd have to get really close up. You can probably see that's a slightly darker perhaps. Um, so most of this tabletop is it's not as dark as that. Maybe as dark as that in the shadows, but it's a little bit grey. So I'll just add a little bit of white to that mix. Actually, I'll do a lot of white just to show you. So that's that's a fair bit of white. So it's looking quite purpley, so a bit more brown will stop it being quite as purpley. So something, something like that. Um, and then perhaps a little bit darker. Tiny, quite a bit of yellow this time. So that was, would be fine for sort of any of these areas. Um, one, one exercise that I do suggest, which if you've done my classes before, um, you probably remember this one, which is really just using, either you can use a photograph, or you could use things like paint charts from the, the decorating shops, 
and actually just trying to mix and match specific kind of neutral colours. So you, you basically would mix mix the colour. So I wanted something a bit like this. Um, it, with with light colours, I find it's the easiest. I think with colour mixing, if it's a light colour, start with the lightest colour, and if it's dark colour you want to achieve, start with the darkest. So you know these. Here, I'd much rather start with just the pure colour and then add white to it rather than start with white and then keep playing in terms of the other colour. Um, but because this is mostly a, a light, say I'll, I'll go for that one there, um, I'll start with white um, and then probably some sort of red, maybe a little bit of cadmium red. Um, it's got a little bit of yellow in it, so I'll try, try the lemon yellow again. Um, and then that gets, that's gone quite pinky, but to be able to sort of see how close I am, I can pop that on there and see that it needs a bit more yellow. I'll add a little bit more, I'll try the cadmium yellow this time. Oh, is this is the wood colours then? You can add more colour in to make a colour, whereas wood colour you don't add that much colour, you just change. So you're using four or five different colours, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. But in wood colour you don't. Well, you try and have less yeah, colours in the mix. Colors. Perhaps so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah perhaps so. I'm, I'm kind of more. I've got more experience with oils and yeah. acrylics and watercolour, really. Yeah, I think probably with watercolours, they say not to have too many pigments in because it keeps it more transparent. It's okay with that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop as many as you want in, really. So, you know, that's gone a little bit closer to it, but it's, yeah. it's a bit more intense than the. It's also quite a good idea for seeing if you've got the tone value right, if it's, if it's too light or too dark. Um, so what I do is add just a tiny bit of blue, just to try and take the edge off. Now I only want the tiniest bit, so that'll be far too much, the bit I've got on the brush. So if I put most of that on the palette, just on the side, then I'll usually find that whatever's left on the brush is enough just to tone that down. And that's, it's not quite there, but it's getting an awful lot closer in, the, in sort of three goes, really. So that's quite a good it, it, you know, exercise. You just want a bit of practice kind of mixing. And because you can literally, with a bit of plastic, um, you can just literally mix and match up to colour charts or photographs, any, anything you want to use, or anything you're painting from. So that's a, quite a good little uh, colour mixing tip. Um, so again, with... with these objects here, if I wanted to uh, have a go at painting the squash, to me it's a kind of peachy colour, um, so it's actually not too dis dissimilar from what I've just been mixing there. But I've got a lot, of, it's in a lot of shadow, there's a little bit, probably because I've shut the curtains and <laughs> it's quite a dull light. Here. Um, so it's kind of like this peachy colour, but probably with a bit more of the blue in it to make it darker, perhaps a bit more pigment. So that's more, I think I'll use both the yellows and a tiny bit of, I don't know, crimson maybe. It's difficult to tell sometimes what the ones go for. So that's, that's what I've got there, which is a bit too bright at the moment. And actually, this bit seems lighter and there was a shadow there. So I'm actually going to try and fit the other blue, a bit of cerulean. Because to me, it feels like there's a little bit of green in the shadow. And it is, it is a very trial, hit and miss thing. And you know what you think it looks like might be slightly different. You might not know which colours to put in. So it, yeah, it, it is. I think sometimes it helps to sort of verbally describe it, like it's a peachy colour, but it's a slightly bluey, you know, slightly greeny or something like that. Trying to see what different colours you can see in there. And the other thing is, with these amazing red heaters we've got, <laughs> it casts the most peculiar shadows. And that's probably where I'm getting that green from, because that would be a rather unusual, but it is a bit like that. I don't think you can see that, but it's a slightly green, green yeah. tinge to, to that. But again, things like that, try and go dark first, get, get your darker tones, and, and further down the bottom, it's darker still. I'm just going to add a bit of brown in, just to sheer convenience, so much quicker. But it, it is more like 
that sort of tone down there. It really is quite dark. So I'd say, you know, try for the colour, but don't be too worried about it. You know, just get approximately, but really, really try and get tonal values as well as colour values. Um, the tone is, is important or more important in a way. You get the thing, the lights and darks, it will read as a form, and if the colour's slightly different, it's not necessarily the end of the world, really. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Right, good. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 